Good morning. My name is Maureen Chong. Welcome to Devotional 2024, Series 2-9. The passage is 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 26 to 32, and the title is Fake Religion. Jeroboam thought to himself, The kingdom will now likely revert to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, they will again give their allegiance to their Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. They will kill me and return to King Rehoboam. After seeking advice, the king made two golden calves. He said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. Once, uh, one he set up in Bethel and the other in Dan. And this thing became a sin. The people came to worship the one at Bethel and went as far as Dan to worship the other. Jeroboam built shrines on high places and appointed priests from all sorts of people, even though they were not Levites. He instituted a festival on the 15th day of the 8th month, like the festival held in Judah, and offered sacrifices on the altar. This he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves he had made. And at Bethel he also installed priests at the high places he had made. Insecurity is a frightful position to be in. Many dictators fear the rise in popularity of their competitors and thus attempt to put them in prison, falsely accusing them of crimes they have not committed. Many build up an arsenal of weapons to protect themselves against imagined enemies. Many resort to bribe their citizens with meager benefits so that they might increase their goodwill toward their dictatorial leaders. All efforts are made to keep themselves in power. To them, losing control is worse than death. Fear is a strong and formidable motivation. You can see glimpses of insecurity and fear in Vladimir Putin, born in uh, 1952, now the president of Russia, and Kim Jong-un, born in 1984, the supreme leader of North Korea. You can also see that in Jeroboam, king over Israel, from 930 to 909 BC before Christ. Jeroboam sees Rehoboam, king over Judah, from who was uh, from 930 to 913 BC, as his chief competitor. Rehoboam succeeded the mighty king Solomon as heir to the throne of David. David and Solomon were kings over 80 glorious years in the history of the unified kingdom. Jeroboam fears that his northern kingdom of Israel might revert to the dynasty of David in the south. Moreover, the capital city of Judah is Jerusalem, where the temple of God resides. If the subjects of Israel were to worship God in Jerusalem, they would have to regularly leave their country. Nostalgia might draw the Israelites to Judah. Such is the insecurity in Jeroboam. He fears not only losing control, but also losing his life. Jeroboam says to himself, They will kill me and return to King Rehoboam. Verse 27. So Jeroboam made two golden calves. He pretends that it is for the convenience of the Israelites, such that they need not travel the distance to Jerusalem to worship God. Here are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt, he announced. This harks back to what Aaron said to the Israelites at the foot of Mount Sinai when Moses was at the peak receiving the Ten Commandments from God, Exodus chapter 32, verse 4. Forsaking Jehovah Yahweh, they again turned to the golden cows as the gods who freed them from slavery in Egypt. 
Jeroboam has forgotten the lessons of sinful mistakes recorded in history. One golden calf was set up at Bethel in the south and the other golden calf was set up at Dan in the north. You might recall that Bethel was the place where Jacob saw the stairway to heaven in a dream. Genesis 28. Twenty years later, after accumulating family and wealth, when Jacob returned to Bethel from Padan Aram, God appeared to him again and blessed him. Genesis 35. Bethel means the house of God. Now to make the fake religion complete, Jeroboam built shrines and appointed priests from people who are not Levites. This is against Moses' law about the priesthood belonging to Aaron and his descendants from the tribe of Levi. Exodus 29 verse 9 reads, The priesthood is theirs by a lasting ordinance. In this way you shall ordain Aaron and his sons. But Jeroboam doesn't care. Perhaps the Levites have deserted the northern kingdom Israel and migrated to Judah in the south. However, Jeroboam deals uh, with the situation as he wishes, brushing aside the command of God. He needs priests to handle the sacrifices at the altars. To him, it is only a job to be filled. To make the fake religion even more complete, Jeroboam instituted a festival on the 15th day of the 8th month, like the festival of sacrifices and worship in Judah. God commanded that his covenant nation should meet three times a year at the temple of Jerusalem during Passover, the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Jeroboam is brushing aside the command of God. He only cares to keep his subjects within his kingdom of Israel. Now the citizens have their holidays. Was Jeroboam not chosen by God to be king? Didn't God give him a conditional promise in 1 Kings 11, 29-39? Is the story of Jeroboam's encounter with the prophet Ahijah. Ahijah conveyed the message that God would give Jeroboam ten tribes of Israel to rule over. Even though Israel sinned, God would leave the descendants of David two tribes out of twelve to keep his promise to David. For Jeroboam to keep his throne, he must do whatever God commands. Then God would build a dynasty for Jeroboam as enduring as the dynasty of David, vividly described. But Jeroboam's insecurity and fear are too overwhelming to ignore. He chooses to find his own security by human means, even to the extent of creating a fake religion, leading his country to worse sin than before. I ask myself, what do I fear the most to lose? Do I have imaginary enemies? Do I resort to fake means of self-preservation in the name of a fake God? What or who do I worship? Is the priesthood to me just a job? Are the Christian festivals to me just a holiday? How real is the triune God to me? Some time ago, I found myself loving the church at which I served almost more than loving my God. When people attacked or criticized the church, I felt that they were attacking or criticizing me. It If it were not 100% identification, it was at least an 80% identification. I naturally arose to defend my baby. The Holy Spirit nudged me to realize that it was unnecessary, even wrong. As it happened, I had to leave the church on my retirement at the suggestion of my superintendents. It broke my heart, but I realized that it was good for me to be non-attached. God's kingdom is much wider than one local church. Now I have found a new spiritual home to which I belong. I still love Christ's church, which is figuratively speaking his body. But the body of Christ is far bigger than what I used to be fixated on. Praise the Lord. I think of pastors or church leaders who worship their own ministries. They themselves have become the golden calves and fig gods. They use 
anyone who supports them to fill ministry positions as fake priests, as we speak of priesthood of all believers. Spiritually immature new believers become ministry leaders before they are ready. This unfortunately leads to the demise of the church. The Christian calendar decreases in importance. Good Friday and Easter become a mere long weekend. Thanksgiving is another holiday. Christmas and New Year are a week-long family or group vacation. Who cares about the advent of Christ? Would soon head out of town for a week-long vacation or a trip elsewhere. The decline of Christ-centered faith creeps in gradually. Now it is in full bloom. Fake religion has taken over all for the sake of our convenience. The call to sacrifice with Christ on the cross is lost among the voice of commerce and self-aggrandizement. It hurts to see the downfall of the church of Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, my Lord, I'm hurting inside. Your church seems to be losing ground in North America. We have fallen. I long for your return to be our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But before you come for judgment, there are still many souls to be saved. I count as many as 20 people I am praying for daily to come into your kingdom. I am torn between asking for your imminent return and waiting for those souls to come around. However, your timing is perfect. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But come, Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come. I pray in Christ's beautiful name. Amen. My friends, beware of fake religions. Don't ever fall into this trap. May God bless you all. God loves you. I'll see you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.